What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, got something exciting. We're gonna be talking about smoke grenade photography, which if you have not seen, is pretty big right now. But also, this right here, just took it today, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So anyways, I'm gonna talk about tips on how to make sure that your uh, smoke grenade photography turns out how you want to. Make sure that you're not wasting these smoke grenades because they're pretty expensive but also just making sure that they're turning out like pictures you'd want to be able to show off to people. The first tip that I'm gonna to suggest to you is if you are doing this, remember that each of your smoke grenades is going to cost, if you're using the Enola Gay smoke grenades, uh, you're gonna be running about five to $10 per grenade. Error just came up on my screen, okay. So about five to $10 per grenade, which is a lot of money for just about 30 to 45 seconds, depending on what grenade you get. So make sure that you're planning out your shots before you do them. You're not just like pulling the pin and just hoping that the model's gonna know what to do. Try to talk out what you're gonna do and how to use the smoke grenade or before you pull the pin, because you wanna make sure you're ready. The second tip I would give, ah. The second tip I would give is if you are shooting with the double-ended uh, Enola Gay smoke grenades, what I'm talking about, if you don't know, uh, normal smoke grenades, you pull the pin and the smoke comes out one end, um, just like any other smoke grenade you've ever seen. But Enola Gay makes a second version where if you pull the pin on one side, smoke actually comes out both ends of the smoke grenade. If you are using those, be warned, the double-ended Enola Gay smoke grenades only last about 15 seconds. <laughs> You're good, I got some good stuff. Okay, cool. Oh. They're very powerful and it's just gonna like consume the area that you're doing it in. Um, so just be ready for that. You kind of wanna always be moving forward with those because if you're not, it's just gonna become a big cloud of smoke within about five seconds. Um, those honestly, in my opinion, are not the best for doing these kind of shoots. Uh, I had two of them, both of them kind of got wasted because it's just like so hard to get the right moment and the right like timing on those. So if you are using those, just be warned, they happen really fast, they're really strong. Just try to work with it as much as you can if you already have them. Um, if you haven't bought smoke grenades yet, I would recommend not buying those unless you have a specific reason you have to. The third tip I would give is make sure you or your models, whoever's doing the shoot, knows that uh, the way that smoke grenade works um, is that the slower that you're moving the smoke grenade, the more full the smoke is going to seem. Um, so if you move a smoke grenade slowly across the model, in, or the model moves the smoke grenade in front of them, it's gonna look a lot like cloudier and clumpier than if you just like whipped it, right? If you whip it, you're gonna get a bunch of smoke clouds going everywhere and it's gonna like look very thin and weak. If you move it slow, you're gonna get that nice clumpy smoke that makes the pictures look really good and pop a lot. The next tip I would give is make sure that you are shooting with something that makes it more unique than just using a smoke grenade, right? I mean, anybody can go out and buy a smoke grenade and go give their model a smoke grenade and take a picture of them. It looks cool, yeah, but there's a lot of things that can be done to kind of improve that one more step up. One of the things that Haley and I have always done, um, we did a shoot, I think two years ago, and then we just did a shoot today, which is why I'm recording this, because it's fresh in my head. We always get some sort of prop that we can put the smoke grenade into at some point, because it just gives like another dimension instead of having the model hold it like every other picture you've ever seen, you put it inside of something. So we last year or two years ago, we used a pumpkin like uh, trick or treating bin thing that we bought from Target for five bucks. This year we used a ceramic skull that's meant for holding candy for Halloween. It really could be anything though. I mean, I've seen people use like umbrellas. I've seen people use just wooden boxes or like, uh, I mean, anything that something can go inside of, you can use it. Now, quick tip, this is not really like a photography tip, but everyone gives us when they're talking about smoke grenades, they can stain your clothes. So make sure that you know that, make sure your model knows that. When you pull the pin, make sure it's not facing you, you know, just general safety things, but also it will stain the clothes if it gets too close. If 
if you're just in the smoke, you're not really gonna get a stain, but if it, right when it comes out, there's about, I don't know, six inches, where if you're within that six inches and it touches you, it's gonna uh, stain your skin, stain your clothes, whatever is in reach, it's going to stain it, so just be warned about that. Now, the last thing that I would recommend, um, it's kind of just like a general photography tip in general, general photography, it's just a tip in general. Um, make sure that when you're going out to shoot, uh, you have proper permission. So when Haley and I went to go shoot this picture right here, we checked the laws. So in Austin, uh, smoke grenades are not counted as uh, fireworks. Um, anything that, it said something like a pyrotechnic device that emits smoke after pulling a pin or lighting a fuse does not count as a firework. But just honestly have fun with it. Shooting smoke grenades is something that is so much fun, but it also can look so good so easily. I don't know, just have fun with it as much as you can. Smoke grenade photography is one of my favorites. It's so much fun. It's so easy to make your photos look good. Take the time to do your research and have fun with it. Thank you guys for watching so much. I try to make this video not as long. I hate watching photography videos where they talk about a lot of things that don't really matter to what I'm looking up. Um, so hopefully I didn't do that too much, but uh, yeah, if you guys like that, if you're interested in more photography, uh, videography, programming, like development stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that's what this channel is going to be about. Um, yeah, other than that, thank you guys for watching so much and uh, I'll see you in the next one. I don't know what the next one's gonna be, but I have a lot of cool things lined up in the next like week, so just, uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I know I've said that like three times, but I'll see you in the next one. Peace.